Where were you? I've been waiting for dinner for the past hour. Henry, I've gone shopping. So again, you were out burning away my hard earned money? But I didn't buy anything unnecessary, Henry. Nothing unnecessary? Seriously, what's all this then? But we can afford to spend a little more this year, can't we? You're going to have a big salary and have so much more money after your promotion. Yes, half of the new year. But there will be a whole month before my salary is due. We borrowed with them. Nora, you're so naive. Suppose I borrow 50,000 today, and then we spend it all this week. And then on New Year's Eve, I get killed in an accident. Don't say such things. Suppose that happened. What then? There can be no freedom in your life that depends on borrowing and debt. We managed so far, and we'll go on the same way. Nora, don't be upset and behave like a child. What do you want from me? Well, you might give me some more money. Just as much as you can afford. And then one of these days I'll buy something with it. Alright. Now are you happy? Of course. Now let me show you what I got. And all so cheap. Here is a t-shirt for you. And a doll for Emma. Nora. A t-shirt for your parents and... Nora, do not always in the future. What are people who are always wasting money for? Spendthrift Henry. I know. But I do try to save all that I can. All you can. That's very true. But you can't say anything. So just like your father. The money just runs through your fingers, isn't it? You never know it is all gone. Do you remember ourselves? How we had to scrape through? It's a good thing that our heart are over now. It was the saddest time I've known in our marriage. 
I'm so sorry, Nora. I know how fond you were of your father. <laughs> I'm talking of nothing but my own affairs. I haven't even asked you for tea or coffee. Nora, aren't we meeting after 10 years? Let's just sit and talk. But are you sure you don't want anything? Yes, I am sure. I want to talk. All right. Well, Christine, there's something I've heard about you. You can ask me. I'm not quite sure, Christine. It's slightly inappropriate. Nora, you know me. You can ask me anything. Okay, but you can't get angry with me, okay? I promise. Well, Christine, is it true that you did not love your husband? Why did you marry him then? Nora, my mother was not keeping well. She was bedridden. And don't be careless. And you remember I had two younger brothers. I had to take care of them. When I married him, he had some money. But the business he was in was a very risky one. So when he died, everything fell into pieces. And nothing was left. And then? And then? I had to turn my hands to almost anything I could find. The last three years feels like one long working day with no rest. <coughs> my mother does not need me anymore. She's gone. Are you never going to 
to tell you Laura? Maybe. <coughs> Someday. Now what do you think Christine? Do you still think I'm worth nothing? And let me tell you. It hasn't been easy. I've had to save a little here and there whenever I could. Every time Henry gave me money for dresses and other such things, I just saved it. Come in. Hello, Mrs. Henry. You? What is it? What do you want? I needed to speak to your husband about the bank. You see, I have a small post there. And now that he's to be manager, I needed to just ask him. He's in the study. Very well. Nora? Nora? Who is that man? A lawyer by the name of Crockstad. Do you know him? I used to know him a long time ago. He has changed a lot. He had a very unhappy marriage. He's a widow? Yes. No, no. I won't disturb you anymore. In fact, I've come here looking for a job, Doctor. Very nice. Your being in a town will be a great comfort to Nora. Uh, what's keeping Henry tied up so long? A uh, lawyer of the name of Crockstad. A uh, fellow you probably don't even know. Completely corrupt, Nora. Downright corrupt. What did he wish to speak to Henry about? I didn't quite hear. But it was something about the bank. Ah, there he is. Let me introduce you. This is Christine. Hello. Yes, of course. We are still different of my wives, I suppose. Yes, we have known each other since then. And just think, she's traveled so far in order to see you. What do you mean? Christine is tremendously efficient. And she really wants to work under some knowledgeable man. Very sensible, so Mrs. Lynn, very sensible. And when she heard that you had been made manager of the bank, you know, she traveled here as fast as she could. I'm sure you'll be able to do something for her. For my sake, won't you? Well, it's not utterly impossible. Do you have some experience of accounting? Yes, I do have a fair amount. And it's very likely to find something for you in the bank. Thank you so much. There's no need. Today you must excuse me. Goodbye, charming ladies. Wait a minute, I'll join you. Are you? 
Well, I thought as much. So, without beating about the bush, is Mrs. Lind to get a job at the bank? What right have you to question me, Mr. Crockstad? You, a subordinate of my husband's? But since you ask, you shall know. Yes, Mrs. Lind will be working at the bank. And it was I who recommended her. Oh, so Mrs. Henry, you will be so kind as to use your influence on my behalf. What do you mean? Mrs. Henry, you shall see to it that I do not lose my job at the bank. I don't understand. Who is going to take your post away from you? <laughs> Come now, Mrs. Henry, there is no need for this pretense of ignorance. I can quite understand that your little friend is not exactly anxious to be working with me. And I can also quite understand who I may have to thank for losing my job. But Mr. Crockstad, I assure you... To come to the point, Mrs. Henry, I think it's about time that I should advise you to use your influence to prevent that. Mr. Crockstad, I have no influence. <laughs> Haven't you? No. I just thought you said yourself a moment ago that your husband practically... Naturally, I did not mean for you to interpret it like that. What would make you think that I would have any such influence with my husband? Mrs. Henry, I have known your husband since our student day. I doubt he's any more unassailable than our other husbands. If you insult my husband, I shall turn you out of the house. You are bold, Mrs. Henry. I am not afraid of you any longer. Hmm. As soon as the new year comes, I'll pay off all your debt and be rid of this whole thing. You listen to me, Mrs. Henry. If necessary, I am prepared to fight for my small post at the bank as if I were fighting for my life. So it seems. It is not a matter of money, mind you. This is something different. I may as well tell you the whole story. You see, Mrs. Henry, my position is this. You might be aware that several years ago, I was guilty of a small indiscretion. I think I've heard something of the kind. The matter never came into court. But my reputation was marred forever. And at that point, I came across this job that you know of today. Now, things are different. My sons are growing up. And for their sake, I need to win back as much respect as I can. This, this small job in the bank, it was the first step for me in my time of need. And now your husband is going to come in and... it is not in my power to help you at all. Then it's because you don't want to help me. But... I have means to compel you. You don't mean that you will tell my husband that I owe you money? <laughs> hmm. And suppose I were to tell him that? Do it then. I'll leave it worse for you. My husband will see for himself what a piece of scum you are. And you certainly won't keep your post there. Mrs. Henry, I asked you the question to see if it's only a scene at home that you're afraid of. If Henry gets to hear of this, he will at once tell you what is still old, and we shall have nothing more to do with you. <sighs> Such delusions, Mrs. Henry. Now you listen to me. Either you have a very poor memory, or you're completely unaware of our little business. I shall be much obliged to remind you of a few details. When your husband was ill, you came to me to borrow? Yes. And I graciously agreed to give you the amount that you wanted based on a few conditions. Now, I took these conditions and made an agreement stating them. Do you remember that? Yes, and which I signed. Yes, you did. Along with your signature, there were a few lines constituting your father's surety for the money. I'm sure your father should have signed those. Should? My father did sign them. <laughs> Along with the signature, there was also a space on the document for the date. Now, your father must have dated the document. Do you remember that? I think I remember. Five or six days later, Mrs. Henry, you came back to me with the documents. At which point, I gave you the money. Yes, and how did I be paid in that regular? Fairly so, but to come back to the matter at hand, that must have been a very trying time for you, Mrs. Henry. 
Yes, it was. Mm. My father was extremely ill. Mrs. Henry, I don't mean to be insensitive, but what day was it that your father died? What day of the month, I mean? It was the 29th of September. Mm. My condolences. And now, I have ascertained the date for myself. And what presents itself, Mrs. Henry, is a small discrepancy that I cannot account for. What discrepancy? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. The discrepancy lies, Mrs. Henry, in the fact that your father signed this document three days after his death. You just said yourself that your father died on the 29th of September, whereas this document says it's the 2nd of October.
unnecessary changes in the staff. Oh, so that was why this poor crossed What? And yes, he's throwing a party for us this week to celebrate my promotion. Oh, um, Henry, if you weren't so busy, I would have asked you for a tremendously big favor. What is that? There is no one who has such a place to you, Henry. And I really want to have for this party. Won't you help me pick a dress? You need my help? Of course, Henry. I can't get along a bit without your help. <coughs> All right. That's nice of you. He forged someone's name. Have you any idea what that means? But isn't it possible that he was driven to do it by necessity? Yes. Or as in so many cases by greed or foolishness. I'm not so heartless as to condemn a man altogether for a single false help of that kind. If a man confesses his fault and bears punishment for it, he can redeem himself. Punishment? But Crockstar, he did nothing of that sort. He got himself out of it by cunning tricks. But Henry, what if it's not like that? Just think how a guilty man like that has to lie and play the hypocrite in front of everyone. How he has to wear a mask in front of his own wife and children. Now the children are around. That's the most terrible part of it all. How? Because an atmosphere of lies infects and poisons the whole life of home. Children growing up. In an environment of lies, cheating, and deceit. Henry, are you sure of that? My dear Honor, I've often seen it in the course of my life. Almost everyone who's not right early in life has had a deceitful mother. Why do you say only mother? It seems most commonly to mother's influence. Henry, anyway, you must promise me not to be this cause. I literally feel Ill when I'm around people like him. Alright? I must try and bring you some of these before dinner. Cancer. 
Really? Yes, Christine. And yet, whenever he's around, he manages to lift our spirits. Nora, does he come here every day? Every day, regularly. He's Henry's closest friend and a very dear friend of mine too. But Nora, isn't he just the kind of person who likes people and flatters them? No. Why would you say such a thing? Well, because when you introduced me to him yesterday, he sounded as if he had heard about me quite often from you. Of course. But your husband didn't seem to know me at all. Nora, how could something like that be possible? Christine, Henry is extremely possessive. Earlier, when I even mentioned somebody else, he would get jealous. So, naturally, I stopped doing so. But with Dr. Rank, it's different. I can talk about such things with him. Because he likes hearing about them. Listen to me, Nora. You are so much like a kid in many things. So inexperienced, so immature. Let me tell you this, you should not be spending so much of time with Dr. Rag. And how could that man be so insensible? I don't understand you at all. Nora, you think I don't know who lent you the money? Are you out of your senses? How can you think of such a thing? Although I'm quite sure that if I asked Dr. Rag... But of Rack, course you won't ask him. I wouldn't want to. But I'm sure that if I asked him... You'll ask him behind your husband's back? Maybe. If the need arises, maybe. Look at me, Nora. You are concealing something from me. Does it look like I am? Yes, it does. Tell me what it is. Christine, I think Henry's home. You must leave. But I'm not leaving. You have to tell me everything. Christine, okay, at least go in. I'll wait inside. You have to tell me everything. Yeah. And only then I'm leaving. Yes, look at that. I just need it back. Henry? Yes? If I ask you for something? What is it? Would you do it? Nora, surely you don't need the request to meet me this morning. Yes, Henry, but you must let Rockstab keep his post at the bank. Nora, it is his post that I'm offering Mrs. Lynn. And I'm grateful for that, Henry. But can't you just dismiss someone else instead of Rockstab? You're being so stubborn. Because you chose to make him some thoughtless promise, I'm expected to change my mind. No, no, it's not for that reason, Henry. It's for your own sake. This fellow is connected to the wrong sort of people. You told me so yourself. He could do us a lot of harm. I'm scared to death of him. Naturally, you're thinking of your father. Yes, of course. Don't you remember how those malicious people Slander Papa in the papers? Nora, there's an important difference between your father and me. Your father's reputation as a public official was not about suspicion. Mine is. And I hope it will continue to be so as long as I hold my office. Almost everyone at the bank knows that I made a business crops out. How would it appear to others if they came to know that the new manager changed his mind just because the wife told me? please. Nora, do you think I'll make myself look ridiculous? But my whole stuff. And let people think that I can be swayed by all sorts of outside influence. <coughs> and lose everything in front of everyone. I must bring it to this. What are you doing, Henry? Yes, send Tom Star a solution letter. Yes, immediately.
very well then, that I make use of as much time as I can get, and whatever time I have left. Whatever time you have left? What do you mean by that, Dr. Lang? Is something likely to happen? Nothing but what I have long been prepared for. But I certainly didn't expect it to happen so soon. What have you found out, Dr. Rank? You must tell me. It's all over with me. And it can't be helped. Probably within a month's time, I shall lie rotten in a No! Clear. Don't say such things. I'm just waiting for the results of one test. When I have those, oh. I shall know quite certainly. But Dr. Rank! When I'm quite certain that the end has come, I should send you a letter. No, no, you can't leave Henry and me. It is a loss you would easily recover from. People come and go all the time. Do you really believe that? Yes, Nora. People form new ties. Who will form new ties? <coughs> Both you and Henry. When I'm no longer here. Stop being so morose. Nothing will happen to you. Now, let me show you something. What is it? Um, forget it. It's too trivial. Nothing you have to say is too trivial for me. Very funny, Dr. Lang. Come on. I'm going to show it to me. No, Dr. Lang. You wouldn't be interested anyway. Okay. Mara, can you please show that to me? Look at what I got. <laughs> what? Why you look so critical? Don't you think it will fit me? I have no means of forming an opinion about that. You see the weirdest things. And uh, what else do I get to see? Not a single thing more. <laughs> and I'm sitting here, talking to you like this. I cannot for a moment imagine how life would have been if I hadn't met you guys. We feel the same way about you, Dr. Lai. And to be forced to leave it all. Nonsense. You are not going to leave it. You will not be able to leave behind anything more than just a few memories to remember me by. No token of my appreciation for what both of you have done for me. And if I ask you now for that? For what? No, Dr. Ryan. I simply can't. It is something out of all reason. It means help and advice and a favor. What? Don't you trust me? More than anyone else, Dr. Rank. I know you are my truest and my dearest friend. But this, I simply can't tell you. My dear Nora, if I am your dearest friend, then why don't you let me help you? I don't think I should, Dr. Rank. Tell me, Nora. Okay, fine. But Dr. Rank, it is something you must help me to prevent. You know how deeply Henry loves me? How he wouldn't for a moment hesitate to give up everything for me? Nora, do you think he's the only one? <laughs> would give up anything for you. <laughs> Is that it? Have you wanted to tell you this before I went away? Now you know how I feel towards you, Nora. So you know it too, that you can trust me, as you would trust no one else in this world. Why, Nora? Am I wrong in loving you both when we get? I really can't tell you. I can't tell you 
anything now. Well, why don't you let me help you? I can't tell you anything anymore. I think you should leave. I take it that you don't want to see me anymore. No. You must come here just as before. I don't want Henry to think that there's something wrong. Yes, but what about you? You needn't worry on my account. So that you open this towards me, maybe you misunderstand. Yes, Dr. Rank, you see, there are some people who one loves and others who one just loves to be with. Yes, there is something in that. When I was at home, of course I love Papa best. But I always thought it was tremendous fun to go down into the main room. Because they never modernized at all. They only talked about the most entertaining things. So, that's it. Now I know. And it is their place that I have been. No, not at all, Dr. Hand. I didn't mean that. But you must understand that being with Henry is a little like being with Papa.
If you listen to me, Christine, I need you to do me a favor. What do you want me to do? If I do something stupid, huh? I want you to tell everyone that I alone am responsible. What? I alone am responsible, Christine. Nora, stop talking like this. Remember that. Nora, stop talking like this. I'll speak to Crocs dad. Why would he listen to you? Because there was a time when he would have listened to anything I had to say. <laughs> Christine, I'll take you. Nora, are you still thinking of that fellow Crocstar? Why would you think so? I can see from how you're behaving that you're still worried about him. I don't know, Henry. You shouldn't listen to anything anybody tells you. Henry? Nothing must come between us. Can I have a word with you? Yes, of course. Well, 
What about now? I doubt things are any different for you. Got rid of her. <laughs> Did you notice how happy you ran from this evening? Really? Yes. And he looks stunning tonight. Did you talk to the regional manager's wife? Yes. I told her how hard you've been working lately. Mm, that'll surely help me. Yeah, 
career, the way you're carelessly having fun tonight, I would have thought you incapable of noticing something like that. Well, one would be a fool not to enjoy alcohol at someone else's expense. <laughs> True. Yes, and the results are as expected. So I am not entitled to a fine evening. Doctor Ryan? Well, I think I should take my leave now. I have a lot to do in so little time. Goodbye. I'll show you all that time. He was a drunk. What is that? A letter? From whom? Henry! Rat needs to shut himself up and die! Certainly. I knew he would not be with us very long. Don't be so upset, Papa. Nora, what is this? Do you know what is Zen's letter? What's that? Is this true? Did you forge your father's name? Yes, Henry. No yes. one. Impossible. Henry, I love you about everything else. Don't give me silly excuses. Henry. What have you done? You've been lying to me. What? You're a criminal. You ought to have suspected that something of this sort would happen. Your father's <coughs> lack of principles. Now you've ruined my future. No. He can ask anything he likes of me. He can give me any orders he pleases. I dare not refuse. I must sink to such miserable depths because of a thoughtless woman. Do you understand?
What happened? Where are you going? I can't believe that. 
God make it say? You don't understand the promises of the Lord in which we live. No, I don't. But I'm going to try and understand that. I'm going to try and find out who's right. The world? Or I? Uh, you can be what I have done deserve this. Yes, Henry, indeed I can. It was tonight when I found out that you are not the man that I thought you were. When Crossad's letter was lying up there, never for a moment did I imagine that you would consent to that man's wishes. I was so sure that you would come forward and you would say, publish the thing to the entire world. And when that was done, yes, what then? Then I'd expose my wife to shame and disgrace. And when that was done, Henry, I was so absolutely certain that you would come to me and you would say, no matter what happens, Nora, I will stand by you. Nora, no man will sacrifice Nora for the sake of love. It's the thing millions of women have done. And then you think and talk like a heedless child. Maybe. But as soon as your fear was over, Henry, and it was not fear for what might happen to you. It was fear, it was not fear for what might happen to me, but what might happen to you. As soon as everything was over, for you, it was as if nothing had happened at all. It was then that I realized that for eight long years, I'd been living in this house with a stranger. Oh, please. I'm leaving. No, please. I have to be a good different man. Oh, please. Wait for tomorrow, please. So our host has abruptly left the play because probably she thought it was too long. Uh, so thanks a lot for being here. I'd like to introduce the cast uh, on behalf of Tick Tricks. So as uh, Nora, we had Fati Govil from PGU15. <laughs> as the evil pale shortest pick, Mr. Henry, we had Satyajit Prabhu from PGU16. Uh, As the villain is Crocsad, Sora Pillai. <laughs> uh, then we had as the lover boy rank, Ankur Pandit the stud boy. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, we had Vidya Panikar playing Christine. Normally at this point of time, the host calls the director to say a couple of words about the play, but speaking, so I would like to thank a couple of people, uh, Ashtosh Vikram, uh, Nikhil Sachan, uh, Yash Kothari, uh, and most of all, all of you who turned up to watch this play. And a big thank you to my cast, because apart from calling them,